Inquisitively, John questions their intrusion. Remy's request for a private dialogue is met with his initial disinterest. Diplomacy beckons, with Remy urging civility, craving an intimate conversation. Isolation is their chosen setting, where John probes her intentions. Her aim becomes clear, an end to the strife. Negotiation on the table. John remains resolute rejecting both compromise and her appeals. Her inquiry into his reasons leads to a revelation, disillusionment with the dominance of the high tiers. His grievances unveiled. He recounts past battles, the welts of unprovoked attacks, and the scars of camaraderie shattered. Remy, wide-eyed, acknowledges her ignorance and extends an apology. Skepticism looms as John sees her words as a safeguard for her reputation, a ploy of convenience. A realization dawns on Remy, realizing her neglect of the lower ranks, a candid admission of culpability. A shift in perspective stirs within Remy, but John remains steadfast. He counters with skepticism of her ability to alter the status quo, reminding her that comprehending the world's complexities doesn't equate to transformative action. Remy, resolute in her intent, contends that change is possible, invoking her brother's legacy of equality. John, skeptical of such claims, questions Arlo's deviation from that path, underscoring the human resistance to change. A philosophical divide, Etched deep, tensions escalate, emotions flare. Remy defends her brother's legacy with fervor, a glimmer of her determination. John, immovable, sees futility in her aspirations. Dialogue collapses, Remy's exit marked by a promise to return. With her departure, John's cynicism lingers. Blyke and Isen exit the doorway tandem, the room quiet once more. Elsewhere, Arlo broods atop the rooftop, weighed down by the repercussions of his revelation to Sarah. Regret seeps in, the turmoil of her struggles making him question his own actions. A plea for an end to John's reign, his willingness to forfeit his pride, an unexpected twist in his character. Remy, walking the corridors, ponders her encounter. A chance interruption reveals a microcosm of the world's inequality, a minor dispute between a high tier and a low tier. She steps in, playing mediator and orchestrates a truce. Her pondering continues, a spark of change igniting. Sira and John, a dynamic duo, return from school. Sira's thoughts remain with Arlo's revelation. She directly queries John, the Joker moniker hanging in the air. Denial tinges his surprise. Sarah, sharing her own stance, pledges a respite from Arlo's meddling. Isen and Blyke's exit from Remy's quarters reminds her to rest up for the big day coming. Perched on her bed, she envisions the tactical dance of tomorrow. With a victor's past against Cecile, handling her ability is a breeze. Remy's lightning rehearsal grants her prowess, an antidote against John's mirrored strikes. Isen and Blyke, steadfast shadows, stand by to bolster her. Her aim? Not to conquer John, but to unveil him in the spotlight. Within the school's realm, John queries Cecile's contentment over dethroning their sovereign. A furrowed brow is her response signaling her concealed plot. John, however, holds insight into her scheme. Her weapons turn to unmasking, for victory eludes her grasp. Blocked paths and vigilant eyes mark Zeke's journey, while Remy steps onto the stage. As the bell rings for confrontation, Remy commands the clearing of a battleground. Lightning arcs and defensive shields entwine, a ballet of power and evasion. A trick emerges, borrowed strength from another. Sparks of judgment punctuate the exchange, and a flash of blue intervention rescues her from pain. But John persists, Lightning manifesting anew, a dance of strikes and dodges unfolds as if orchestrating a symphony of elements. Blyke's intervention is met with defiance. Determined, Remy prevails, only to find herself deceived by a shrewd tactic. Remy thrown aside, eyes shift. Isen and Blyke heighten their stance. Walls scale. A clash of lightning and resilience greets them. John's fury ignites, his gaze piercing Arlo for his intervention. Shields of protection arise, safeguarding Remy. As the battleground is joined by Arlo, Remy, wounded but unyielding, exchanges words with Arlo. Strategies align. Numbers and arms are recounted. An arc of power strikes. Arlo stands resolute. Remy's shocking aid sparks a revelation. The tide tilting. It's working. Things at Wellston took an intense turn when the clash between John and Remy escalated. Arlo quickly realized that John's abilities had a limit. No more than four. In a heart-pounding move, Arlo stepped in to shield Remy just in time. Meanwhile, Sarah's attention was caught by Joker's eerily familiar stance at the window. Brace yourself, because Remy and Arlo teamed up with an impressive combined assault against John. But guess what? John shattered their barrier like a boss and struck back at Remy. Talk about intense action! He managed to fend off his attack and even attempted to unveil his true identity. But John wasn't having any of it. He ruthlessly overpowered her, and victory seemed just a hair's breadth away. Just when things were looking dire, 
Arlo jumped in, refusing to let John crush Remy. The tension soared as John unleashed a shocking blast against Arlo, smashing him to the ground. But hold your breath, because Sira had a jaw-dropping revelation. John's moves were eerily familiar. They were the ones she learned from him. It was clear John had everyone in his grip. Wellston had a new king. As the narrative shifts and the battle ends, John faces the consequences. The principal confronted John over the clash with the royals, warning him against further chaos. Keen's skepticism added depth to the school's complex dynamics, recognizing the uniqueness of John's perspective. Concern for Sarah tugged at John's heartstrings. Knocking on her door, he found a troubled soul, seeking solitude. Sarah's disillusionment with John's facade shattered her admiration, casting him in a new light. Meanwhile, the hospital scene painted a somber picture. Isin and Arlo visited Remy and Blyke, casualties of the explosive showdown. The aftermath left Remy feeling defeated, while Isin's inquiries revealed Blyke's fate hanging in the balance. He's seen him endure far more than others, rendering him silent. An apology to Arlo echoes, a nod to his unheeded caution. Arlo's counsel emerges, urging her gaze toward recovery. Questions arise, their path ahead unclear. Alo's response resounds, a resolute acceptance of fate after a lone figure triumphed over them all. Arlo, a plea to shun trouble's allure anew, and they bid their departure, a silent farewell. Within school walls, John's reign of intimidation lingers. Amidst classroom contemplation, thoughts circle Sarah's enigmatic demeanor of yesterday. Amidst this, Cecile's approach. A query blooms. Why not seize kingship, conqueror of royals? John's reply, a tranquil cadence, no hurry, enjoins her to save her moments. Across the training grounds, Sira's punch to Terence resonates. Queries rise. She departs. A mystique cloaks her. In solitude, Sarah's musings envelop her. Evie's presence offers solace, a bridge to share her vexation. Conversation reveals frustrations, abilities shortfall. A retort from Evie, a reminder of forged confidence. Upright, Sarah excuses herself, veiling turmoil, training yielding for solitude sanctuary. John's beckoning rings. Sira's silence persists. Speculations brew. A whisper of understanding dances by. He presses on. Conviction intact. Dawn unfolds. Elaine's corridor journey, shadowed by John's steps, tension suspended, fingers crack, the Joker emerges, abilities converge, realization dawns, a mimicry, not mastery. Elaine unveils the charade, a clash ensues, a fleeting escape, Arlo's entrance, a backdrop of murmurs, Joker's victorious facade exposed, a call from Elaine, a shared revelation, imitators in the wings, terror's seed to sow, frustration ignites, Arlo's punch, fractured wall, Elaine's steadying words, coaxing tempers retreat, solutions still sought, Cecile's vigil awaits John's approach, discourse blooms, whispers of Shadow Joker stir, her summons to action, met by a rebuff, chaos sown, revelation demanded, meanwhile, Blyke's intrusion back into his dorm makes him feel fear as he sees John. John's stance evokes unease, a reason unveiled. Gathering belongings, a swift retreat is planned. Blyke's concerns go beyond getting lost. He's preoccupied with the looming question of who will reign in John's destructive rampage. Lying on his bed, a determined Blyke resolves to fortify himself and take a stand against John. Remy and Blyke return to school triggering whispers among their peers. Blight contends that over a week should have dulled the memory of their clash, but Isen shatters that notion. A surge of fake jokers has surfaced, targeting those they deem wronged. Remy views this as a stark contrast to John's aims. John's steps echo through the hallway, a solitary figure approaching Sira's classroom. His calls unanswered, he contemplates catching her after class. A sudden encounter with a fake Joker assaulting Sira and Evie ignites questions within John. Why would this impersonator target Joker? Sira valiantly evades the attacker, yet it's John who intervenes, landing a punch. Silence hangs as John checks on Sira blissfully unaware of the impending strike from behind. Sarah springs into action, halting the imposter's advance. Their victory is muted for Sarah, who now sees John's true colors. Evie marvels at the feet of two cripples, triumphing over the Joker. The mask comes off, revealing the imposter's identity, a girl. Sarah, pragmatic and introspective, ponders the implications. She questions the intent behind the imposter's actions, while John concedes the uncertainty. Familiarity dawns as Evie recognizes the girl from their math class. Sarah's empathy shines through, tending to Evie's injury. John offers aid, met with a polite refusal. The infirmary becomes a backdrop for introspection. The doctor notes a resemblance between Sarah and Lila, 
puzzling over the connection. Beside Evie, Sarah grapples with a profound sense of isolation. John's revelations have shattered her image of him. Memories of his words cast doubt on their authenticity. Tears fall as Sarah confronts her disillusionment. Evie reaches out, concerned. Sarah laments her fallen idol, now just like everyone else. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. Who is your favorite character in the series so far? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. Meanwhile, another fake joker harasses a student. Remy intervenes, imparting a lesson in reconciliation. Unmasking the imposter, Remy fosters understanding between the two. In the press room, Ison's harsh critique leaves an article riddled with errors. News of fake joker spreads prompting a suggestion for publication. Ison's refusal draws ire from those around him. At a juice bar, Ison sheds his serious demeanor in front of Blyke. He bemoans his role as students disregard his guidance. The need to share overshadows discernment, exemplified by the epidemic of fake Joker news. Ison wrestles with the inability to rein in the tide of information. Arlo's eyes widen as he stumbles upon a cluster of students huddled around the announcement board. Shock washes over him as he absorbs the news about the counterfeit jokers. Meanwhile, Remy is in full swing, attempting to lift Ison's spirits, who's convinced that Arlo will have his head for this debacle. Slamming the door behind him, Arlo storms in and confronts Ison demanding an explanation. Remy steps in, urging Arlo to simmer down. Arlo's frustration boils over as he pins the responsibility of quelling the news on Ison. Unperturbed, Ison retorts that he never asked for this role, aware of his own limitations. He bemoans the press team's unwillingness to heed his advice and emphasizes Arlo's penchant for dishing out complex tasks without a second thought. Arlo's voice tightens as he justifies his choice, acknowledging Ison's hidden talents. With an ultimatum to solve the issue, Arlo exits the scene leaving Ison to grapple with the aftermath. In the tranquility of a park, Arlo fidgets with his phone, rereading the messages he sent to Sarah for a rendezvous. Disheartened, he contemplates leaving, convinced she won't show up. Just as he's about to depart, Sarah's voice cuts through the uncertainty, calling his name. They settle onto a bench, the weight of the crumbling school hanging in the air. Arlo confides in Sarah, admitting to feeling utterly adrift for the first time. Sarah offers a reassuring counterpoint, sharing her own concerns about John's transformation over the past months. Frustration laces her words as she reveals John's evasiveness. She implores Arlo to shed light on the complete story, given that he and John are the sole bearers of the truth. Arlo's narrative unfurls, recounting the inception of John's charade as a cripple and his subsequent quest for the truth. Sarah's suspension sets the wheels in motion, John's directive to break her causing a cascade of events. Arlo's voice softens as he describes the ruthless encounter at the turf war grounds, the ambush by Miel and Ventus, and the unmasking of John's identity. John's dominance tightens its grip as Arlo endures defeat. However, the balance teeters when Sira loses her powers, marking a turning point. Arlo's disappointment seeps into his words as he recounts the incident with Zeke, John's inaction gnawing at his core. Arlo's inquiry into John's motives becomes a reckoning as he grapples with the realization that John's actions don't align with his supposed principles. Sira absorbs the narrative, her eyes flitting with a mix of understanding and conflict. She needs time to digest, to untangle the intricate web of truths and half-truths. Reassured by her promise to address John, Arlo's gaze drifts, his thoughts lingering on the enigma of Sarah's upcoming conversation with John. Meanwhile, John wrestles with his own demons, Sarah's silence gnawing at him. Cecile's presence interrupts his introspection, her urgency pulsating through her words. John remains resolute, adamant in his decision to keep his identity veiled, entrusting Cecile with Sarah's safety. Elsewhere, Remy becomes a beacon of action, seeking solutions amidst the churning chaos of fake Joker attacks. Her unexpected call to a group of students sparks intrigue, their eyes widening at the prospect of contributing. Tension escalates as yet another imposter emerges, terrorizing a fellow student. Blake's intervention resonates with authority as he stands against the impersonator's tyranny. Demands for the mask to come off hang in the air. Blake's promise of private retribution echoing with a quiet intensity. He tells the victim that his current predicament is a result of his past actions with someone else. A bad decision that led to this encounter with a phony joker. With determination, he brings the imposter to a classroom and demands an explanation. The imposter reveals his motivation, a history of being bullied by the victim, making this revenge his chance to turn the tables. Blyke steps in, cautioning the imposter about the potential escalation and urging him to seek help if bullied again. In Remy's quarters, a strategic dialogue unfolds among the trio. Remy emphasizes the need to rebuild student trust, calling for unity among the high tiers. On another path, Sarah and Arlo stroll together, a rare sight. Arlo extends an offer of protection to Sarah, 
who playfully teases him, crediting John for sparking this newfound understanding. Meanwhile, Cecile discreetly shadows Sarah and Arlo, pondering their connection. While Blyke scours the web for practice targets, fear of attracting Ember's attention weighs on his mind. Balancing between honing his skills and maintaining a low profile, he calculates his moves. Turning the narrative, John approaches Cecile, seeking information about Sarah's encounters. Cecile discloses three attacks that morning, recounting Sarah's resilience against a low tier, her prior intervention against another, and Arlo's timely involvement in the third. A shift in dynamics is evident. Arlo's watchful eye and their seemingly harmonious conversation suggest a patching up between them. John's frustrations erupt, demanding an explanation for Sarah's association with Arlo. Cecile surmises that John's concealed identity might be the root cause, leading Sarah to distance herself and find solace in Arlo's protective presence. John's anger boils over culminating in a beating of Cecile. Sarah doesn't pick up her phone and John breaks his phone in frustration and anger. Ison, restless, confides in Blyke about the Joker news, consumed by overthinking. Blyke's reminder, fake news was inevitable, urging Ison to grasp Arlo's weighty burden, the roles, a legacy. Ison retreats to sleep, but weighed by guilt, Blyke can't sleep, and he leaves. But wait, Blyke's night venture beckons. New side town hums with a distant tremor. His foe's power appears mild, strategy in mind, masked. Like springs to action. Lance and his gang oppress a brave woman, power lust fueling their demands. Defiance flares, Blyke intervenes. Blazing beam, a swift kick. Lance's grip shattered. Mystery surrounds Blyke, his identity veiled. Lance's recruits amass, outnumbering Blyke. Surprise clashes with determination. Blows exchanged. Blyke narrowly escapes. Lance, cunning, disrupts Blyke's equilibrium. Bloodied, weakened, Blyke questions his might. In an instant, a surge surges through him cascading strength to his fingertips. Foes fall like dominoes, his resolve solidifying. Lance looms a final challenge. Blyke charges a dance of abilities. Lance deploys a last-ditch defense. Blyke's vision falters, but he adapts mid-air. An acrobatic kick sealing Lance's fate. Lance tumbles, met with the earth. Blyke's finger finds its place on his forehead, a stern warning etched on his face. Lance's pleas for clemency echo through the air. Blyke's words cut, sparing a life leaving it to the town's people to decree his destiny. Beams strike Lance's legs. A swift paralysis takes hold. Blyke's attention shifts to her. Thoughts intertwined. A shared quest for something more from this town, as Lance once did. Query hangs between them, her uncertainty palpable. Blyke's response is simple, unadorned. A passerby who paused to aid. Skepticism colors her retort. Hidden agendas suspected. Blyke stands firm. No ulterior motives. Pure intention to assist. Farewell. And he's gone. A watchful eye lingering in the shadows. Elsewhere, Ison awakens, finding Blyke still lost in slumber's grasp. Efforts to rouse him falter. A shout falls on deaf ears. A declaration, skipping the first lecture in favor of dreams. A hallway stroll carries Blyke's buoyant thoughts. Power augmented. Victory tasted. At the infirmary, Darren's assessment reassures. Trivial wounds and a plea for resolution. Apologies offered. A step toward reconciliation. In the press room, Ison meets Sarah's gaze. Her quest clear. Papers hide truths, but Sarah unveils them. Joker's veil lifted. Solitary study follows. Every piece absorbed, save one enigma. The mask of a cripple. A call beckons Sarah, unveiling a tale of an attack. A shadow named Joker striking Evie. Sarah's presence offers solace. Questions asked. Revelations unfold, unseen assailants and vanished foes, a puzzle woven of coincidences or more. Evie awakens, gratitude exchanged. Roland's query hangs in the air, vulnerability concealed beneath masks. Sira's conviction strengthens, Wellston's safety at stake, defiance etched in resolve. A message reaches Arlo, Sira's intent to confront John. Doubts cloud Arlo's mind, uncertain ears for her words. A classroom rendezvous, tension thick, accusations fly, denials follow, a dance between trust and disbelief, John's demeanor falters, Sarah's certainty pierces his facade, tensions escalate, past and present entwined, the foundation of trust crumbles, tears shed for what once was, Sarah stands firm, a plea for help, met with rejection, a slap, an unexpected echo of change, Sarah's eyes meet John's, tears streaming down her face, she glances towards the door. A silent acknowledgement of his pain. John's gaze is locked in his haunting past. A reflection of Claire in Sarah's visage. His hand reaches out. A desperate attempt to touch her. But Sarah wards him off. A silent plea to respect her boundaries. In the midst of this emotional exchange, Arlo makes an unexpected entrance. John's surprise at his appearance quickly turns into an explosive punch aimed at Arlo's face. Their confrontation is cut short as Arlo firmly grasps John urging him to face the truth. How could he turn on those who had stood by him, 
especially Sira, for whom John had tirelessly fought. Amidst the tense atmosphere, Sarah departs, Arlo trailing behind her. Alone now, John crumples to the floor, lost in contemplation. His mind swirls with questions of betrayal, echoing the recurrent theme in his life. Meanwhile, Arlo and Sarah converse about John's need for assistance. Sira, grappling with her own doubts, acknowledges her limitations, while Arlo emphasizes the importance of helping John. Sarah reveals her intention to seek out Terence, a decision that piques Arlo's curiosity. Transitioning to another scene, Isen mentors a student on an article. As she exits, she stumbles upon the unexpected pairing of Arlo and Sarah. Their presence raises intrigue, leading Sarah to inquire discreetly about Terence. Isen divulges Terence's unique ability, adding another layer to the unfolding mystery. In a later interaction, Sarah tasks Isen with uncovering details about Claire an enigmatic figure from New Boston. As Ison delves into his search, unexpected company arrives. Blyke, a quick closure of Ison's laptop, conceals his activity, leaving room for speculation. A meal at a restaurant serves as the backdrop for a discussion on the escalating Joker situation. Remy's stash of Joker masks becomes a symbolic representation of the growing threat. Concerns center on the potential impact on mid-tiers, and alliances are formed to address the issue. The challenge of curbing the emergence of new Jokers is identified as a pressing concern. Ison contemplates the power of unmasking the true identity of Joker John. The laptop is abandoned momentarily, a moment of introspection. The chaos wrought by John's actions becomes evident as more students gravitate towards his cause, culminating in battles against fake Jokers. The decision to expose John's identity, though fraught with danger, becomes inevitable. As night falls, Blyke embarks on a secretive mission. The following day at school, Isin witnesses a courageous girl, Gianna, fronting a fake Joker. Her defiance embodies a spirit of resistance against the oppressive atmosphere, while Isin's own conflicted feelings mirror the complexity of the situation. Isin turns his attention to an article about John, grappling with the consequences of his actions. The laptop is pushed aside, his internal conflict evident. The notion of unveiling John's true identity as the Joker looms large, a decision fraught with peril yet driven by a sense of urgency. Isin spills all the beans on Claire to Sarah, just as Arlo struts in, inquiring about Terence. Isin lays out his academic past, boasting of a 2.4 ability score that earned him a spot at Wellston. Arlo's unimpressed, asking why the meetup. Turns out Isin's been sleuthing and Terence isn't the invisible mall dude. Levels don't match. Invisible dude's a two-in-one magician. Sarah weighs in. Terence is either an accidental coincidence or a stealthy high tier. Isin, the theory spinner, suggests a drug-fueled power-up, leaving Arlo and Sarah gobsmacked. Next dawn, students give a fake joker a taste of shoe leather, and Evie waltzes by spotting the battered heap. Lending a hand, she gets into the Samaritan gig. Remy dashes in, lends a helping hand, and a chat ensues. Evie scores Remy's digits, still stunned. In the classroom hustle, John's the center of a paper storm revealing his Joker identity. The rumor mills a buzz, but John couldn't care less. Callum crashes the hallway party, prodding John with the Joker label. A brawl bursts forth. The Phantom pushes fly, but John's fists have the final say blood-stained mic drop. Switching scenes, Sarah's phoning Claire from her cozy cocoon. Claire's a gay-sent questioning, but Sarah clarifies her intentions. No clipboard, just curiosity. Sarah needs her help delving into John's past. Claire's moved on, distancing herself from him. But there's a link. John's a Wellston attendee. Sarah suggests meeting him there. Hold on, Sarah's not just anyone. She's from Wellston too, his classmate. Claire holds the key the only one who can aid Sarah. A few days back, a fiery exchange with John led to him mistakenly calling Sarah Claire. That's how she got involved. Claire, however, jumps to conclusions, thinking Sarah's his girlfriend. No need to worry. Sarah clears the air and urges Claire to hear her out. Something's amiss in John's past, haunting him and fueling his aggression. Claire's optimism wanes. She hoped John would change after expulsion and reprimand. Here's the twist. A switch to video calls unveils a secret bond. Claire reminisces, taking us back to middle school days. First year, a battered John, high rank bullies, and a helping hand from Claire. Friendship blooms. Adrian, John's childhood pal, enters the picture. A low tier back then. Laughter, trouble, camaraderie. Life was good. But John's eyes glimpse an unfair world. Thirst for power awakens. Intrigue heightens when Claire's visions reveal a ray of power from John's hand. Experimentation commences. John sneaks, learns, evolves. He refuses to remain a cripple. Then a showdown, a burst of newfound ability. John's aura changes. Destiny shifts. Graduation doesn't end their bond. Visions persist. Claire's visits continue. Abilities explored. Summer dedicated. High school arrives, and the arena beckons. John rises. Victor after victor. Claire's heart swells. She had a hand in this strength, but success births arrogance. John's goals shift. Revenge and dominance now paramount. Turf wars, higher ranks, a new path emerges. 
John urges Claire to enhance her visions, yet the mighty fall, a defeat. A bruised ego, frustration builds, John's craving grows, another vision, a new strategy, amplify copied abilities. John's power surges, Zirian the king, toppled, triumph turns toxic, John becomes king but rules like a tyrant, Claire, Adrian, low tears dismissed, her plea for an apology met with blame, in a world where the delicate dance of balance is shattered, friendships fracture, and the corrupting tendrils of power spread their grip, Sarah becomes the seeker of puzzle pieces, while Claire safeguards memories, and John teeters on a precarious edge. Echoes of the past whisper as a shadow looms over the present. Amidst ranks and strength, his existence loses meaning. Claire's visions continue, a silent tapestry of his life. Yet she withholds these glimpses, a connection severed. Then, a revelation from John, the ability to hold more than one power. Two, then three, and even four. With growing might, violence takes root. Claire voices her concerns about his excessive force in turf wars, met with promises that prove empty. Promises crumble like sand. Unheard pleas fall on deaf ears. Adrian intervenes, met with punishment. Claire's voice rises, met with a slap. Drawl follows, but he finds a new companion. Fear spreads, voices hushed in his looming presence. Students become prisoners of silence. Even the staff bows before his unruly power. Claire distances herself, yet the whispers persist. Accusations label her as an enabler, creator of the monster he's become. A desire to halt the madness gnaws at her, but uncertainty paralyzes her steps. Final vision crystallizes her purpose, a plea to Zirian for alliance, a lie spun to unshackle the truth. Zirian's reluctance melts under the weight of justice. In the shadows, Adrian listens, misinterprets, and takes action. Allies assemble, scars and wounds uniting them. A pact forms. Words before abilities. John arrives, surprise flickering across his face as the wronged gather. Accusations hang heavy. A storm of anger swirls. Blame is flung. Betrayal declared. Confrontation erupts, but power fuels defeat. A grip in her hair. An accusation of monstrosity. Brutal beating. A hospital bed becomes her refuge. Adrian steps into the fray, revealing the truth of John's destruction. A cycle of abuse. Power's poison coursing through his veins. Once the tormented, now the tormentor. Claire's voice trembles. Sympathy for a fallen tyrant. Sierra's reassurance. Absolution from guilt. Inquiring about Wellston's fate. John's reign remains unbroken, but not unchallenged. Sarah holds the key to his reckoning. In the quiet sanctuary of the library, Remy's vision blossoms. A safe haven, a shield from the storm, an idea embraced by Blyke. They step into the press room, only to find Ison attempting an unsuccessful game of hide-and-seek behind the table. Blyke's curiosity takes over, prodding Ison for an explanation. With a hint of trepidation, Ison confesses to publishing an expose on John, fearing the impending consequences. Remy, however interjects with a glint of optimism, pointing out that Ison's article has effectively dwindled the ranks of the counterfeit jokers. A wave of relief washes over Ison, his risk now bearing fruit, but their purpose for being there comes to light as Remy unfurls her plan for a secure haven. She enlists Ison's aid in promoting this sanctuary, placing an ad in his publication. Quick to commit, Ison pledges to feature it in the upcoming edition. Meanwhile, Remy and Blyke dive into preparations for an introductory session with fresh recruits. Unexpectedly, Remy loses her footing. Just in the nick of time, Blyke springs to action, steadying her with practiced ease. Employing his abilities, he inadvertently shoves a table aside, inadvertently shattering a window. Amused yet curious, Remy remarks on Blyke's growing prowess, a confidence that had waned after his clash with John. Stepping outside, John navigates the school grounds, the air thick with chatter about his newfound Joker status. A trio, Zeke, Martin, and Jeline emerges, Zeke eagerly embracing the role of instigator. Armed with hearsay, he aspires to expose John's vulnerability, and the crowd begins to lend credence to his words. Observing from a distance, Arlo recognizes the all-too-familiar path Zeke treads, one he himself had trodden. Meanwhile, Cecile, her gaze locked onto the unfolding scene, hungers for the revelation of John's true self. News of the impending confrontation reaches Evie and Sarah. Concerned for John's safety, Evie inquires if Sarah shares her anxiety. Unperturbed, Sarah dismisses the concern, firmly believing John won't falter. John's thoughts meander, recalling the contemptuous treatment he endured while feigning vulnerability. Now unmasked, he witnesses the same repulsion. Such disdain, he concludes, does not warrant his empathy. Zeke prods John for a response, only to be met with a biting retort. The unexpected reference to a past lunchbag incident rattles Zeke, sowing doubt within him, yet the audience is not privy to his inner turmoil, and he remains steadfast, unwilling to retreat. In a split second, the altercation takes a dramatic turn. John, a master of mimicry, emulates Zeke's power, evading his onslaught. His first target is Marden, whom he hurls to the ground with commanding force. A surge of terror courses through the spectators 
triggering a mass exodus. Zeke stands frozen, haunted by the uncertainty of his fate. His gaze shifts to Jolene, a last vestige of hope, but even he succumbs to John's wrath. Propelled into a wall by an unyielding kick, he gets absolutely smashed. Zeke's sprint to safety becomes a futile attempt as John seizes him head on, shutting down any escape. Punch from Zeke is deftly countered by John, snapping his arm with chilling ease. Memories of Zeke's ill-fated dorm invitation resurface, fueling John's relentless grip as he hurls Zeke into the unforgiving wall. How's it feel to be on the receiving end? John taunts. A wicked grin accompanying Zeke's reluctant apology. The commanding gesture, John proclaims himself the new king. A reign marked by his mercilessness toward any who dare challenge him. He flings Zeke aside, demanding a public display of submission. On bended knee, Zeke pleads for mercy, only to have his plea crushed by John's triumphant headbutt. The school's corridors echo with John's proclamation of kingship as he strides onward, his path fraught with apprehension. Arlo, questioned by the onlookers, relinquishes his claim to the throne, acknowledging John's undeniable dominance. That's it for today. Keep your eyes peeled for our next recap, and make sure to like and subscribe for more recaps like this.